Good morning, ladies. Um, if you wouldn't mind just opening up. Hi, I'm over here. You see my fingers. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna come around in a second. I want to get everybody admitted. If you want to open up um, the PowerPoint that I gave you for today, um, we're probably not going to get through all of it, but we're going to get through as much as we can. Hi, Sawyer. Avery, Kaylee B is in, good. Now Carter and um, Olivia. Um, Carter, 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 Olivia, Annie. Annie, it's so good to see you this morning. It's so good to see all of you guys. It's so fantastic to see everybody. I miss you guys. Um, Gabby is here. Let Gabby in. Jaden Ramos is here. Isabella is here. Welcome, 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 welcome. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, Olivia. Tell her I miss her like crazy. I know I told you that yesterday, but I still miss her. She's so fantastic. Courtney and Kyle. <laughs> and Kyle. Let me come around so you guys can see me. Let me let a few more people in. Diego is here. Now you just get to see my ponytail, which is just, I couldn't find an actual hair tie this morning. So I had to use a headband, it's good. Um, Diego is here. Let me just- um, Why are you at school? Um, because I have really bad internet at home and I, um, I like using the smart board. I know a lot of the other teachers don't really use the smart boards all that much, but I am like super dependent on it. Like I use it a lot. So um, yeah, I am here for that reason. And mostly because I just have really bad internet at home. Okay. <laughs> Embarrassing, Diego. <laughs> God, y'all. Smart boards are crazy expensive, Kyle. Smart boards are like, um, like, like $2,000, $3,000. They're very expensive. I wish I could buy a smart board for my house. Go fund me. Here we go. That's what I'll do. Um, okay. I'm going to take about one more minute to let a few more people come in. Um, we're missing quite a few people this morning, so I just want to give people the opportunity to still jump in. Brando, Jonah, um, Billy isn't here, Alyssa Button isn't here, so I just want to, yeah, they're kind of expensive. Um, so I'm just going to give another minute, and then we're going to go through our, there she is, Miss Button. Let's have button this here. Okay, so here we go. We are looking at a test on Tuesday. We still will be testing on Tuesday, even though we are in this predicament. Um, it's gonna. It might look a little bit different. I might run like a secondary group in the afternoon um, for people to join if they want to just sit in there and do the test with me. Um, I'm going to sort of discuss with Miss Sisson um, this afternoon what she thinks we should do, and then I will get you more information on Monday. So our agenda for today, we're talking about slope. What is slope and how do I, <clears throat> how do I calculate slope, okay? So your I can statements by the end of today, this is reviewing a little bit of what we did yesterday. So it's I can find the slope of a line and I can decide if a point is on a line using the slope, okay? So let's take a look at our sort of, we're gonna look at some guided notes for today, okay? So when we talk about slope, slope is talking about the what of, the, of a line. When we talk about the slope, it's talking about the what of a line. We have slope, it's talking about the, what did I call that when I- Angle. The angle or the st st steep, Steepness. 
Steepness, yes, Diego, the steepness of our line. Steepness is a word, but it is in math class. So in your guided notes, we're going to write down that the slope is the steepness of our line. So when we think about slope, we can think about something. Go ahead. Are we writing this in our slides? Yes. So on these slides, you're coming in with your cursor and you're going to be like clicking on it and typing your answer in. Okay. Let's take a look at the next piece here. So we're talking about slope. The slope is the change in the what over the change in the what. We say this two different ways. The first way that I talked about slope is slope is what over what. We're not using our textbook. Huh? Rise over run. The rise over the run. Fantastic job. It's the rise over our run. Fantastic. And we can also talk about it. <laughs> we can also talk about our slope as the change in our what values over the change in our what values. What did we say that was? The change in our good. Go ahead. Y values over x values. Over our x values. Very good. Whoa, I spelled values wrong. Okay. So we're talking about um, the slope of a line is the change in our y values over the change in our x values. Okay. So that's why I gave, you only have one set of boxes there. I know that. So what I did when I wanted to copy and paste another set of it is I highlighted both of these boxes here and I copied and pasted another set in so that I can write that, that second piece in there. Does everyone see how I did that? Let me know if you're not able to copy and paste another set of boxes in there, okay? Okay, so this last piece that we're going to be talking about, two points, if there are two mm. points, oh, sorry. Are we supposed to write this in the slides? Yep. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't. Not a big deal. Oh. It's only like three or four words you have to write. It's not a big deal. Okay. So, um, two points on the same line have the same what? So if I'm looking at a line here, I have a line that's on a grid. I have this point right here, it's two comma two. And I have this point right here, it's four comma four. If they fall on the same line, that means they both have the same what? Scale factor. Scale factor, so if I'm coming from zero, it would have the same scale factor, good. But it can also be called, it has the same sl slope right so if these two points fall on the, the same, same length the same length and the same slope so because they're falling on the same line they're going to have the same slope because if you're looking at a line any point that falls on that line so i'm going to draw another line over here so we have a line here and it has one two three points on it the slope from here to here is going to be the same from this point to this point. It might look bigger, but it's always, so this could be one, this could be two, this one will be two, this one will be four. Okay? So any point that falls on the same line has the same slope. Oh, we lost somebody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know why I'm giggling, but it works. Okay. So, no. No. Ah, which piece, Diego? <laughs> uh, uh, last one. It was slope. Okay. Two points on the same line have the same slope. Let me let Kaylee back in. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, we're looking at this next piece here where we're looking at how to calculate slope on a graph given two points. 
So we talked about yesterday, when we were calculating the slopes of these lines, we were taking these coordinate points and we were subtracting y2 minus y1 and creating a fraction of your x2 minus your x1, okay? And let me give you some coordinate points for this one so that we can do some of this math right now. So this coordinate right here is um, 4, comma, 4. This coordinate down here is uh, 2, comma, 1. Okay. So if I want to do this calculation of my y2 minus my y1, and I know that coordinates are written x, comma, y, and I know that the second coordinate is going to be the one that's further to the right. So if this one's going to be coordinate one, and then this one is going to be coordinate two because it's closer to it's further to the right. What would be my y2 value here? Looking at this second coordinate, my y2, what is my y value in that coordinate? What do you think, Avery? I don't know. So looking at that coordinate, the coordinate is written x comma y. What is my y value in that coordinate? In that four comma four, Avery, what is my y value? Four. Okay, good. Very good, because my y value is here, and that is a four. Very good. And I'm going to subtract from that the y value in my first coordinate. What's the y value in this first coordinate here? Um, Annie. Yes. What is the y value in my first coordinate here? One. Very good. So I'm going to subtract four minus one because it's my y2 minus my y1 over my x2. What's the x coordinate in my second? What's the x value in my second coordinate here, Bridget? Four. Very good. My x value in my second coordinate is a four. What is the x value in my first coordinate here, Sawyer? Two. Very good. The x value in my second coordinate is a two. So what would the slope of this line be? Who can tell me? Gabby, what's my slope? Three. What is it going to be? Two comma three. Okay, so we write slope as what over what? Oh, sorry. Three over three comma two. <laughs> Not three comma two, it's three over two. Three halves. We're not writing it as a coordinate pair. We're writing it as a fraction. Okay? We write slope as a fraction. Okay, so this one you can't really write down because I'm sort of writing all over the place and you're just sort of following along. I need to get better at creating things that are, um, that have boxes on them. So um, that's gonna be my goal this weekend to make things a little bit more typing friendly because we won't be in our book anymore. So let's take a look at the next piece here. We're gonna skip right over slide number six and we're gonna look at slide number seven. So I'm given this line right here. Let me, I need you guys to help me to calculate this slope. So I need someone, I need you to take 30 seconds right now to decide what is my, how can I calculate the slope of this line? How am I gonna calculate the slope of this line? 
And then I want Jaden to help me out. What are we going to do to calculate the slope of this line here, Jaden? One minute, Avery. I want to let Jaden take a chance. Figure out the rise and the run. Yes, Jaden. So Avery, unmute yourself. Help me out to find the rise and the run here. Okay. What do you think? For the first one, it is, give me a second, mm -hmm. um, three up and five across. Are we looking at the same thing here? Because there is three up and five across is not even sort of remotely what we're talking about. So let's take a look. We're on slide number seven. Let me just. Wrong one. We're on slide number seven. So. <laughs> I'm my slide. I, was saying, I was saying it wrong. That's okay. So let's take a look at slide number seven. And can you help me to write this slope here? No. No? No. no. Okay. So we need to, Olivia, help me out, unmute and help me out. What is our rise and our run gonna be here? Your run is gonna be two. Very good. We're looking at this slope triangle that we drew in here. We have a run of two and a rise of how many, Olivia? Four. Four. So if I write that as a slope fraction, Jaden, that's okay, Kaylee, what is it gonna be? Two over four. It's rise over run though, Diego. Sorry, four over two. Very good. It's gonna be four over two because we're writing it as rise over run. So if I have a fraction of four over two, Bridget, what does that simplify to? Two. Very good. So our slope is going to be equal to two over one. So in that box, you should probably write two over one or the two. Okay. That is that bit right there. Okay. So now we need to create an equation for our line. This is where it gets a little bit tricky and we need to remember back to uh, oh gosh, when did we do this? Um, miss, it won't let me do the fraction. Um, what, what, like what piece of it's not letting, is the box not big enough? No, like I type in, uh, two over one, like in a slash, and it won't let me do a fraction. Okay, that, that, it won't, it won't necessarily always turn it into a fraction, so you can leave it as, Diego, if you write it as, um, two slash one, you can leave it like that, okay? Okay. Awesome. Thank you for reaching out, Diego. Um, we need to create an equation. And remember, we create equations as y over x. But y over x is equal to our slope. We only use that equation when we have an equation that passes through our origin. Does this equation line pass through our origin? Throw it in the chat, yes or no? Nice job, Jaden. Throw it in the chat. Does this equation line pass through our origin? Yes or no? Nice job, Gabby. Yes. It passes through our origin. Our origin is right here. Oh, no. No, it doesn't pass through our origin. So when it doesn't pass through our origin, we need to pick one of our points that falls on our line and subtract the y and the x values from them over here. So we're gonna pick this coordinate right here just because it's the first one that I saw, seven comma seven. So when we have this when we're, when we're trying to find the equation for this line, we're going to write the equation as y minus my y value, which is what? 
in that coordinate seven. pair? What, seven, very good. And then what's my, we're gonna subtract from our X, the X value. What's the X value? Seven. Seven. So we're gonna say Y minus seven equal, or over X minus seven is equal to our slope. So it's gonna be equal to what number? What number are we gonna be able to put in there? None. What's our slope? Two over one. Two over one, very good. Is equal to two over one. So if I had chosen this coordinate pair, what would my equation look like here? It would be y minus what? X, o, x minus what? What would it be if I chose this coordinate pair right here? What would my the, the numerator be? Y minus? Um. Y minus three, and then- Very good, Diego. Wait, wait, wait. That's fine. I'm gonna have somebody else do my X. Okay. Uh, uh, Kyle, what would be my X? It would be X minus what? What do we think, Kyle? The denominator would be because we, we subtracted our y value from our y, and then our it would be x minus, nice job, Kyle, five. Very good. And we're going to say is equal to that slope, that same slope, okay? So you're not going to have to create equations on the test, but I wanted to make sure that we had this down because when I taught this the other day, this was that activity that sort of got cut because we um, had to go out for, we had to do our, 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 our computers and I wanted to make sure that we got this piece of the lesson in, okay? So that's all that we're, I know that there's some more slides on here and there's an exit ticket, but I'm not gonna go through that today because we're sort of learning a new way of like learning today. So what I wanna close off by doing is I'm going to pull up what I want you to work on today, this afternoon during, um, so in the afternoon you have, I know that um, Miss uh, McCain probably talked to you guys. In the afternoon, you guys have from 12.45 to 2.45 to work on activities given to you um, by your teachers. Um, give me one second, Diego, um, on that. Um, so yes, sir, so in, when we look at our, um, like for example, if we look at our schedule for the day, um, if we look at the one that's posted in our hive, um, it's right here, distance learning schedule, and you open it up, it has the time frames for all of your period, like all the class periods. So from 1245 to 245, it's marked as um, band or chorus lessons, but that's going to be scheduled. But also, you will also use this time to complete all of your asynchronous work. I'm going to be giving you on any normal day, we're going to be doing 30 minutes worth of work during our Zoom, and I'm going to be giving you at least 20 minutes of work, 25 minutes of work outside that you're going to have to complete during this time frame every day. So I'm going to be giving you work to complete outside of here. And um, when you go into, so that's just an FYI for the future after next week, because next week we're going to be doing the test and we're going to be doing an IAB. So it's going to be a little bit different next week. So what I want you working on this afternoon during that time is in your classwork section, in the heading of 11.9 to 11.13, you have the homework assignment from 9 or 11.10. If you click on that, it opens up the review packet. When you click on it, it will look like this. Okay, I want to go through the expectations for this. I know a lot of people, I saw a lot of people were actually doing work with this already. So if you finish this, then this afternoon you don't have any work but I'm talking to all the people that haven't finished it yet. So you're taking um, the 30 minutes this afternoon of work time to go through and answer these questions. Um, it could be the correct answer, I don't know. I'm gonna go through it on Monday, okay? So we need to highlight all the true statements. So you're gonna take your cursor. If you think that um, 
um, statement is true, you're going to come over here and you're going to highlight it. You're going to select all that apply. So there's probably going to be more than one. Okay. So then in question number two, it says the quadrilaterals are similar to one another. So A, B, C, D, and E, F, G, H. Name the corresponding sides and angles. This is going to be a this is going to be a good one for you guys because I think you guys are going to do very well with it. So cor side A B corresponds or matches up with G H on the other one. So in this box right here, I expect you to type in G well like G and then an H. Okay. I don't expect this little line on top. You see how I have that little line on top. I don't expect you to put that on there. I just need that G H there. Okay. Give me one second, Diego. I'll talk about that in one second. And then you're going to be finding your corresponding angles. Okay. So our corresponding angles would be I have angle A up here. Which one corresponds or matches up with it in this figure down below? It would be angle H. So what I expect you to write in here is angle H. Writing out that word angle and then H. So, Diego, the whole thing with this is that we can't be running. We were told that we cannot be running a 55 minute class on Zoom every day for every single kid because it's too long that you're sitting in front of the computer um, with nonstop and it's just not going to work. So the reason that we're doing 30 minutes with me and then 20 or 25 minutes independently is just because we want to break up the amount of time that you're on the computer sitting um, nonstop in front of the computer. It's not going to be able to change. And um, that's just sort of how it's going to run until we come back full time. And I'm not leaving all of the work for that time frame in the afternoon. We're doing half of it in the morning, half of it in the afternoon. I'm not gonna expect you to do a crazy amount of work during the afternoon. And you're gonna be watching, it's not gonna be just I'm giving you work and you're working on it independently. What it's gonna be is I'm gonna be pre-recording videos and you're gonna be doing an activity while you're watching the video. And then you're gonna pause it, maybe do a piece of the activity and then play the video and see the answers. I'm not gonna leave you guys with no answers for anything. We're gonna be doing work alongside a video and getting the answers as you're working, okay? So I don't want you to freak out and think that it's just all gonna now be independent time. It's all gonna be guided by me, whether it's live in front of me or whether it is a pre-recorded video that you're gonna be working alongside, okay? We're gonna get it, it's gonna work, okay? I'm not gonna let it, I'm not gonna let you guys fail. I'm gonna keep changing my practice until you guys are good with what we're doing, okay? I'm not gonna stick with something if it's not gonna work. This is just my idea moving forward, okay? So let's take a look at the next piece of this. Last piece of this is that you need to estimate the scale factor from A, B, C, D to G to E, F, G, H. Don't give me crazy numbers here. Give me a nice estimate. What could be the scale factor? I'm going from this small one to this big one. Throw an estimate in here. Now you're going to select all the lines that have a slope of one half. So that means you're going to come down in here. And if you believe that, yes, this has a slope of one half, I want you to put an X. If you think that it, no, doesn't have, you can get rid of the box and put an X there. So if you think maybe this one doesn't, you would have an X put in there. I put slope triangles on three of them for you to easily calculate the slope. Wait, what? What, Diego? Oh, um, can you repeat like marking the- One second. Extension three, two, one, one. What do you need, Diego? Can you repeat why, why we're putting the X's again? What do you mean? Oh, 
I didn't say anything about accesses. I said we're finding and calculating the slope here, Diego. No, no, I said x's. Like you're putting the x's down for. Oh, uh, so you're saying so for this one here, you're deciding does this have does this line A have a slope of one half? And then if it does, you're going to in this box put an x to mark yes, it does have that slope. If you think it doesn't have a slope of one half in the no column, you're going to delete that box and you're going to put an X in there. Okay. Okay. Yep. So Olivia, for that piece, what you just asked me in the chat, I'm going to upload a video later on that goes through another one of those examples. Okay. Okay, let's take a look here. Um, here are some polygons. Highlight all of the polygons that are similar to in, to to polygon A in the figure above. So we have this polygon A here. You need to highlight the shapes that are similar to polygon A in these ones right here. That means we multiply by a, the same scale factor to get from one to the other. You're going to, if you wanna highlight it, you're going to highlight it and hit this little highlight button and choose the color that you want to highlight it, okay? Then for one of the shapes that is that you said was similar, you're going to describe the sequence of transformation that takes A to the one you said. So if you said uh, B was similar, then you could say, how do you get from A to B? First, you translate it. So you would write B here. And then you would say translate, translate, um, three units, down, then you rotate, um, rotate um, 90 degrees clockwise. And then you could say dilate by a scale factor of 16, okay? So you need to tell me specifics Give me vocabulary like translate, dilate, rotate. Um, give me specifics like numbers, 90 degrees clockwise or three units down. And if you're talking about dilating, tell me the scale factor that you're going to use, okay? There we go on that one there. Let's take a look at the next piece here. So we have triangle ABC and DEF, and they are similar. You need to find this, the length of segment BC and the length of segment AC. So BC, AC, maybe find your scale factor, find a pattern, and in this space, tell me 17 units and one half unit. Give me that answers, those answers there, okay? Now, all of the points in the picture are on the same line. This is what we did in class yesterday. I will be posting a video again going through how to go through these examples here and calculate our slope. You have to find the slope, the value of A in this coordinate, and the value of B in this coordinate, okay? Um, once again, I said I'm going to post a video going through this one and how to do this example here, okay? So last one here is I want you to draw the dilation of ABCD using center A and a scale factor of one half. Label the dilation A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. So you don't need to actually draw your dilation on here. I'm going to show you how we're going to um, do that um, on the test in class on Monday when we have our Zoom sesh. What I want you to do is I want you to find the new rise in the run for each one of your coordinates using a center of A and a scale factor of one half. So you can actually come in here and you can type in these boxes. So I wanna see all of your work in here and you take your rise and your run from that center of A, multiply by your scale factor to find your new distance. You're doing the same thing for B using a scale factor of one third this time and a center of C, okay? So that's what's expected of you for this activity here. This needs to get completed between now and our meeting on Monday.
Does anybody have questions for me about what's expected of them? No? Okay. So you guys can head out. You um, will be heading to science. I want you to wor work as hard as you can, Diego. Okay. We're going to go through everything on Monday. You guys can head out to science. If you have questions, send me emails this afternoon and this weekend. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. I will see you on Monday. Whee! Bye, Kyle.